Hey everybody, it's good to hear. Let's see who is going to join me live. Let me open up my laptop as I'm waiting here, being very hopeful. Somebody's going to join me live. It is Saturday after all. Got one person here. If you are hopping on, please say hi, say hello. Let me know who you are, especially if you are new to the group and this might be your first time live with me. Please let me know. So a very interesting topic that I want to talk to you about today. Hello. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good to have you here. I'm so glad just I can see that I can see. Hello. <laughs> I'm sending you an hello back on my phone. Um, it's not often that I can see comments on my phone. My phone acts up every now and then. So excited to see you here. And the topic that I wanted to talk to you guys about was actually a question that Melissa um, asked earlier in the week. So I put up a post and I said, if you can ask me anything about cash flow forecasting and management, what would it be? Because as you guys might know, um, I'm currently putting together, I actually recorded it this morning, my cash flow forecasting made easy training that is um, going live on Monday. So if you're not in the training and you know you have to be there, you know that cash flow is something you need to work on, you better check it out. I'll send you the link in the comments later on. But uh, I asked that question in the group because I wanted to see what is people's questions around it so that I can make sure that I answer as many questions as possible on the training, right? Because personally, I can only think of, you know, stuff that I can think of. I also think of stuff that my clients think of that's in my inner circle and that I work with privately. But I always want to hear what the community uh, has to ask and has to say as well. Hey, Tracy, so good to have you on here. So Melissa's question that she posed in our Facebook group was, Gerda, how much of the finances and the money stuff do I actually share with my team, right? Hmm, interesting question, very interesting question. And, you know, I, I can take a lot of approaches here, but I, I want to try and be concise because it is Saturday afternoon and you might have better things to do than sit here talking to me, right? So I thought what I would share with you is a little exercise. Hey Jade, how are you? A little exercise that I have done with my team previously. I know it is a great question, Tracy, right? Because it is such a difficult thing. Hey Erin, how are you? Um, and I've been at that place where I've gone, you know what? I realize that my team actually doesn't have a clue in terms of what goes into running the practice. Not that I can expect them to have a clue, right? They are clinicians. Their job is to be psychologists and OTs and speeches. Their job is to look after clients, to you know, do clinical interventions, assessments, write reports, etc., etc. It's not their job to do budgets and cash flow forecasting and pay bills and pay wages. Um, so they actually don't know what goes on. They don't know about all the expenses and how much, right? They can only assume. They can only assume. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times when people assume and jump to conclusions, they get it wrong. We know that. It's why CBT tells us that jumping to conclusions are one of the 10 most unhelpful thinking styles there, right? Because you so often get it wrong. And I uh, once found myself in that situation where I just went, you know what? My team doesn't have a clue. I can't get frustrated at that. Okay, I can't get frustrated, so I need to do something about it. So I put together this little exercise um, that I did with them during one of our bi-monthly team um, PD days, right? Um, so what I did is, and I, and I really try to be creative. I don't see myself as a creative person, but I try to be creative. So what I did in terms of my preparation 
is I ran a list of all the expenses at the practice. So if you go into your profit and loss statement and you just run a report, your most up-to-date profit and loss report for a 12 month period. And I went through and I identified what was my biggest expenses? What was my top five expenses at the practice, right? And certain things you can really um, lump together like overheads and stuff like that. And, and I mean, I can't remember off the top of my head even what those five things were. One or two I can remember, but I'm sure it would have changed over time as well. So I, I ran those numbers, I divided it into these are the five categories. And then I, um, I, I looked and searched and found like just, you know, humorous little images to go with it. Like I remember the one was like, a, for example, and the one was like a picture of a house which represented our rent and stuff like that. Because, and I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to bring in stuff like that because money can be a pretty serious conversation, right? It's like, ugh pretty serious and uncomfortable and I wanted to just, you know, bring a, a bit of creativity into it, just show that it doesn't have to be that serious, that it's okay to talk about it, we can be comfortable talking about it, it can actually be fun talking about it, that type of thing. So, and I did that. So I, then I went into the practice and I just introduced it and said, you know, I, would, I, um, I, I felt that it was time to share with you guys, you know, what happens at the practice, a bit of the behind the scenes, give you a bit of a look inside, you know, the business side of what it is that we do at the practice. And then I, I, I started by saying, so as you guys know, when the clients come in and see us, they, you know, they have their appointments, they pay at the front desk and all that money um, that they pay into you know, at the front desk goes into the practice bank account. Now that might be your piggy bank, for example. So this is our little piggy bank here at the top and I put that on the whiteboard with some blue tack. So, so all that money goes into our piggy bank. And then, so, so that represents 100% of the income coming into the practice. And then what we need to do is we now need to use that money to run the practice. So I went, so the biggest expense for the practice is of course you guys. Well, actually, change that. I actually did something else first, but that's how I explained it at the end. So I said, that's where I stopped. And I said, so, you know, all the money goes in there. And then I said, okay. And I gave them each a clipboard, a pen and paper. And I said, all right, so I want you to think if that is 100% of the money coming into the practice, what do you think is our top five expenses? So I want you to draw the one, two, three, four, five, and I want you to tell me what percentage of the money goes to each of those expenses, okay? So I let them sit, I gave them five minutes to do that, and then I asked for feedback. So it was a bit of an experiential process, right? So, um, and then what I did is I just made, I wrote it down, like uh, what people said, maybe two people said rent, most people said rent, right? What percentage they thought it was, etc., etc. So we put that on, on witches papers, I think at the time. Um, and then I went, okay, so let's see how that compares to what actually happens. And I told them where I got the information from. I told them that I ran this report in our profit and loss. So this is very up to date numbers uh, that we are looking at. And then I, I had all my stuff ready. I said, okay, so this is our piggy bank. Um, all the money comes into the practice. That's the hundred percent. So our biggest expense at, at my practice is, um, you know, minimum 50% of all that money goes to you guys, who's a wonderful team that looks after our clients, because obviously we've got, got, got some contractors, right? Now, if you have a um, employees, that will be your salaries and wages. And you can even include in their salaries, wages, the super, the tax that you pay on that, um, you know, um, the leave accrual, all of that stuff. What's the other thing? Oh, leave loading. Uh, as part of our award, all of that money is part of that category, right, of paying your team. And it is the largest part, and it has always been the largest part for us, because if you think about it, um, we pay our subcontractors 50%. Some people are on a higher percentage 
um, but you know everybody starts at 50 so at least half the money goes to them all right and it was like yeah you know they know that and then which means that we only have another the other 50 percent left to pay all the other things right uh, um, so so that's a lot of money that's a lot of percentage left and then we went through okay so rent rent is another let's say and i'm making these percentages up now i can't remember it's been too long ago rent is 20 percent i remember at that time printing and stationery was so expensive for us that was like 10 percent and this is this and this so we really showed them you know of that money coming in where's our money going to and no it doesn't go to line my pockets it doesn't go towards lining the pockets of the practice owner the expenses are huge it is huge so um, i would actually encourage you to do that exercise for yourself and really see where most of your money is going to what is your biggest expenses and does your team actually realize how expensive rent is um, at my practice i actually think our rent is not that expensive um, but i have heard of practice owners that pay like six thousand dollars rent a month it's like oh kill me now geez that's so much money right times 12 12 times 6 no i should not embarrass myself with my maths here i won't even try but that's what calculators are for right so that you don't make mistakes but that's the whole point um your team doesn't know they're guessing and i think when you start to open that door to really sharing with them that you know what 100 percent of that money this is how much goes to our team and this is how much goes to our admin team. You can even break it down a bit more if you want that support you guys. This is how much goes towards, you know, if you've got a mobile office, fuel, repairs and maintenance, all the cars and stuff. If you have a large assessment practice, you know, maybe there's costs around that. I would, hey Sonia, I would strongly encourage you to do that exercise and to share it with your team, right? And it was a really well received activity. I think the people in my team learned a lot from it. I know um, for sure that they really appreciated it because they told me the week afterwards was their week for their individual supervision sessions with me. And they all mentioned how helpful it was to actually hear a bit more about the business side and uh, that was actually the first time I shared that type of, type of stuff with my team because I have always been one of those practice owners that's gone, you know what, the buck stops with me. I'm responsible for steering this ship. So I need to carry all the risk, the responsibility, the worries. I was always scared that if I shared too much of the team, what if they jump ship, right? They go, oh my goodness, this is not good. Or they judge me for something. And therefore I carry that stuff just by myself. and. And that's really hard work to do, right? Um, and I thought I was doing the team a favor by not sharing this stuff with them. Saying, share your profit and loss statements. Don't share it. Don't share those things with them. Don't share your balance statements with them. It's not about sharing with them the details of it, but it's really just by letting them peek behind the curtain and just having some transparency around this is our biggest expenses at the practice this is how you know the percentage just how things get divvied up that type of stuff they really really appreciate it um and i think there's more trust when you share some of that stuff with them um versus just withholding it and when i withheld that information it wasn't that i didn't trust them or even myself I just always had that belief that as the business owner, I need to manage all of the risk. That is my worries. It's like, that's my worries. I have to own those worries. I have to own that pain. And it's like, you know what? It actually helps when you share it with them because then um, they have more of a clue uh, and they're not so quick to judge. They're more understanding. And as a result of doing that exercise the first time, we now have a standing item on our um, team meeting agenda. 
um, a view into the business or window into the business I think we updated that too we we always give them some uh, piece of information about what's happening more on the back end of the business really trusting them with that information sharing it with them being transparent and it has really had a big impact on our practice culture it's also just opened up the money discussion it allows us to have money discussions more comfortably and you, you know it's it's just been really really good so it's it's balance not too much but not nothing at all and as i said if you can be bring a bit of humor into it and just make it a bit fun making it a bit experiential like i got them to you know come up with what they think and share really getting them to talk about money because i didn't want it to be me doing a presentation of okay um where's my glasses so i look clever doing a presentation about the money at the practice. I didn't want it to be that. I wanted money discussions to be easy so that we can be comfortable about it, which is so, so important, particularly for our industry because it doesn't, that comfort doesn't com com comfortably for the majority of us, right? Yeah. All right, so that is what I wanted to share. I hope that has been helpful. Um, I know there's quite a lot of you already in the cash flow forecasting made easy program if you're not in it as yet and if you're interested i'll pop up the link to the training i recorded it this morning it is full on it is so full on and um <laughs> i did an, a general introduction and then i did i called it the anatomy of a cash flow forecast and i talked um in the training through the outline how it works and then i talked through the three steps and the three things um, three ways and time frames of doing your cash flow forecast because you don't just do it once it's not a set and forget activity and of course you'll get a template as well as an example and there will be a follow-up q a so i'd love for you to join us in the cash flow forecasting made easy training hey michelle how are you um so i'll share that with you guys but i'm gonna go uh it is saturday afternoon what's the time it's 2 35 here where i am and i'm gonna take my boys to the beach now so have a fabulous day and remember as always all you need to do is say yes to your very own ultimate level five private practice bye for now